God bless you guys. I just want to come on here and share a uh, share a dream I had um, yesterday that might bless uh, some of you. Uh, I'm in my car. You know, it's it's a little dark. You know, I have the light on, but you know, it's it's not bad lighting. Um, but I I wanted to share this uh want to share this dream I had that uh basically about the mark of the beast and uh, once saved always saved. And, uh, you know, so basically I was, I was dreaming, I was having some kind of, uh, like, what do you call it? Uh, it's like I was getting some, these spirits of lust trying to attack me, come in the form of women, you know, and I knew it was like demonic and I rejected it. And after I did these spirits or these fem female demon spirits, they turned after they couldn't get me to lust with them. They turned uh, like onto ass assassins almost to try to uh, kill me. And then the dream changed and I saw spots on a map and I saw different dots that represented believers. And I was hearing from the Holy Spirit telling me that your brothers basically and sisters are suffering the same persecutions of you. So just hang in there. And then the dream of the Mark of the Beast started and it was a future. And I was in a little room and we were all, the Christians were all in this room. It reminded me of... Uh, Maybe like where, you know, guys, when you go to get your driver's license, but also uh, a jail, being in jail. I was in jail once for some minor thing, uh, some minor car related thing. It was a misunderstood thing, you know. And but the cops in Georgetown, they arrest people for almost anything. And they, the cop that arrested me, he was just having a bad day. The other guy's going to let me go. But, uh, but anyways, it was, it was kind of like reminded me of that it there was no scary music this was in the tribulation there was no scary music no feeling of deep deep eeriness but i understood by the law that we were in there for rejecting the mark of the beast and you know at one point this guy i was going to be like the neck or the last in line but each person would have their turn and they would go and they would decide i guess if they were going to take mark or not for sure and then if they didn't they would decide on their death basically and they had these forms they wanted them to fill out basically forming signing they were rejecting the mark and they were a uh, person was talking to over them what kind of death it would be and they said something about a death by hanging you know and i thought that was pretty crazy uh saying that and they said you need to sign some forms or whatever and they were rejecting the mark and then when they heard that uh, this guy i heard that was a christian he said well, I was always told, like he was thinking, I was always told God cares about what I say, not what I do. And he said, and I know this sounds crazy, but then he said after that, I, I ain't calling on that black man. I'm calling on God, you know. And, you know, the, you know, I'm not, I'm not a racist person. I don't, you know, follow racial things, but I, I've always gotten mad about people who make racial comments and maybe the Lord knew I, did that and just wanted to give me uh just show me this was a comment from the guy's flesh you know the antichrist will actually studying the book and in, in the bible he'll be middle eastern and some people could say you know like olive colored skin like muslim people and different people it could be considered black but it's not it's not black they're middle eastern so i believe he'll be the same color as jesus and jesus is a little bit darker skin you know i've seen him like that picture of a cane he looks like but he just has a little bit darker skin but uh anyways you know, he said, I was always told God, I was told God cares about what I say, not what I do. I ain't calling on that black man. And then, and then this woman said, who are you talking? She said, who are you talking to me? This woman that worked there. And she said, uh, she said, who are you talking to me? And she said, you can call on or believe on whatever God you like. And then insinuation was, you can call on whatever God you like, but if you want to survive in the system, you're going to have to take this mark, basically. And the, that was a guy's way of saying when he said that God cares about what I say, not what I do, I understood that he was contemplating taking the mark and the, uh, the dream ended and it never said if he would take the mark or not. But, you know, that's how this once saved thing is always saved is, guys. Jesus showed me that in the dream that the people that believe like that and during the tribulation, you know, if they, I don't want to get into pre-trib, post-trib, you know, I don't know about that. I wasn't shown about anything about the rapture. All I was shown is these were believers in there and I was there. And, you know, they said, God cares about what I say, not what I do. And that's, isn't that how the grace movement is? You know, grace apart from uh, works, you know, and, and they twist that scripture. 
by faith apart from works. And so they tw twist that in, into saying you can work in equity. He said, God cares about, I was told God cares about what I say, not what I do. And and you notice in many churches, they, they, they say, confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth, believe on him in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved, you know. And they, they zero in on those mouth lip confessions. And, and, and the scripture that comes to mind also, Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And it said they professed him with their lips, but they in their works they deny God. And so that's what this once saved, always saved is, guys. And it's preparing people because they think God will forgive them. You know, God, I, they can just take the mark and they can forgive him because why not if... If they can slip up and sin, why can't they go to God and ask forgiveness? And so it is this once saved, always saved doctrine, guys, is setting people up for the mark. You know, and and we find a lot of stuff in the Bible about Jesus saying, Not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father. You know, and, and when I received this dream... It didn't seem like it was super, super eerie. It seemed like a normal law to not take a mark. It was so real, guys. It was so real. And the people weren't even striving in them and saying, take the mark, take the mark, take the mark. It's just they were in that situation and they knew they were about to be facing death. And so they involved. And, and the people that told them basically to take the mark, it was, it was more like a freedom thing. It was more like you're free to do whatever you want, but these are the consequences. You know, they didn't even say the consequences. They were just calmly going over the people's forms about what kind of way they're going to die, and the other person heard it, and it broke them down. And maybe he was in there, and he rejected the mark, but it's like an emotional breakdown when you get in there. And if you love not your life to the death, like the beginning of my dream, I had to deny myself those girls I had to deny myself and when I deny myself they wanted to kill me and so this world system the mark represents this world's good and when you reject it you're rejecting this world's good for Jesus and they're going to want to kill you for that in some way so now guys maybe this stuff all this Jesus telling us to deny ourselves to take up our cross and follow and maybe it's practice for later on if if so be we should find ourselves in that situation. Maybe it's practice for later on. And I don't think the people will be able to resist the mark giving up their lives for God if they're not able to give the little of their lives now for God and uh, turn away from sin. Because you're rejecting this world's good. when th This world's good is offered to you when you're sin. That good sin, that lust, that pornography, that uh, alcohol. That's this world's good. That's like the mark. And... When you take that, guys, you're rejecting Jesus. And it's a spiritual representation. And the guy saw from hell testimonies that people already had the mark spiritually in their foreheads, even Christians. They listened to false doctrine, once saved, always saved, taking the mark of the beast in their forehead, that they can have Jesus. And, and see, the people that told them, you know, we don't care what you believe or what you say. And it was like, go ahead, take the mark, and you can go ahead and practice your religion, practice your Jesus faith. And that's how it's going to be offered like it's not even a bad thing so please be careful guys be careful what you listen to be careful about what kind of doctrines out there because there are some really damnable doctrines out there that will take you to hell and none of us knows when our our time is going to be called whether we're going to go through a little trip the great tribulation or just a little tribulation on earth and we want to say no matter what we die to ourselves we follow jesus so he can say well done good and faithful servant Anyways, guys, I pray this blesses you. Until next time, shalom.